We're back at the beautiful Mohaka River. It's a really wonderfully misty morning. And uh, this is kind of special because in a way, this is where the show started. Uh, coming here, coming to this river and this place, it's like what really inspired us to pick up the camera and start filming these adventures. Every time I put my rod together, it feels like a task last performed too long ago, no matter the actual time passed since. On this frigid morning, I assemble a simple spinning rod and it gets the honor of first act here in this misty valley. I've been having good success on the Rupala style lure, which basically mimics a small fish in the water. Trout are territorial fish and so these things elicit a bite often even if just because a trout may want to eliminate potential future competitors or because they're hungry. It's early in the day, and so I figure chances of catching something are a little higher, and I want to give it my best shot first. I'm not quite sure who's more excited though, me or my trusted fishing buddy Charlie. Spinning for trout is really easy business. Anyone who's ever held a fishing rod can give this a crack which is what I love. No big barrier to entry, and you don't even have to spend a lot of money for it. In saying that, the real purpose of why we came here is because I've been wanting to try my hand at a far more graceful form of angling for trout, fly fishing. And while it may seem that I know what I'm doing, trust me, I don't. I'm standing here, I just try to uh, go into the pool. Okay. Fortunately, my good friend Hannes, who's an avid fly fisherman, took time out from his busy schedule to take me to one of his favorite spots and give me some valuable pointers. Still, the struggle is real. Seriously? I feel like a total amateur here, but I don't let it dampen my spirits much. Super easy, massive, pretty much. Back to day one on the Mohawker. Time to put those freshly learned skills to use. And by midday, the sun even begins to poke out and cheer up the day. There's a couple of really sort of shallow um, pools just here. Um, and the river is really full and really uh, flowing really strongly. So we spotted a couple of really big fish in a really shallow rock pool. Um, I've tried presenting a couple of nymphs. No take, not interested. Let's see how they go with the Rapala. Success, trout on the line. Though you may notice that my fishing net is securely fastened to my backpack. I have little option but to walk this trout back to the shore like a chihuahua on a lead. Here's an interesting fact for you also. The fish in the water can only exert about one third of its weight. When you try to lift a fish out of the water on the other hand, well, the full force of the actual weight kicks in and promptly snaps my line. Luckily, I quickly get my hands on this guy before he swims off. It wouldn't have been the first time either. Yeah, there's a trout. Wow. Awesome fish. Beautiful, super shallow water. 
just ate the Rapala right away. There was actually another one just even bigger, just sitting right next to it. Um, there you go. Beautiful Mohaka uh, fish. Nice one, Mr. Wild Food Expert. Fish. It's a brown trout. There we go. <laughs> Jay-Z spotted it. Chucked the Rupala in there, caught it. Here's one beautiful wild trout for eating. I want to put this guy out of his misery. Beautiful, uh, beautiful jack. As you can see, the uh, the lower jaw develops this little hook. It's called a kipe. Uh, only the males and only after sexual maturity develop that little hook at the bottom of the bottom of the jaw. It's a beautiful jack trout. Got into a little bit of a tussle with something at some stage, I would say. War wounds. And uh, I wouldn't keep too many fish this size. We're going to keep them this time around because we're filming a show about wild food and eating wild food. Uh, but generally, trout this size, I'd put back in as breeding stock and keep just slightly smaller fish for eating. There's plenty of meat on this trout, and so we decided to take what we were granted and head back to the camp to make the most of the sunny afternoon. Hey, winter days are short. So, you know, I'm not typically the kind of guy to brag about the biggest fish or the biggest deer. I generally don't care because I do it for food. Um, but sometimes it's, it's cool, like sometimes to weigh something to see what it is, you know, it's awesome. And uh, seeing as our fishing net has a, a scale in it, that's the... Uh, Almost a four pound brown trout. Three pounds and eight ounces. That, my dear, is a solid Mohaka fish. This is actually the fish roll, as you can see inside of here, and this is a jack, so this is a male trout. This is the uh, the, the male uh, roll. Uh, as you can see, it's quite small at the moment because the fish have just been spawning, so I think these fish are actually largely spent. Um, however, we are going to take out this roll and eat it because it is delicious. Uh, this is the stomach. I'm going to cut that right open. Have a good look inside. So when you want to understand what it is that you require to capture an animal, it really pays to understand what it is they're eating. And if we have a really good look here, these are basically, its entire stomach is full of uh, some plant stuff and then amongst there just a whole heap of nymphs and larvae you see the whole fish is full of it it's one thing that's absolutely key for fish get the pan really hot that way the fish doesn't stick and you get a nice crisp sear on one side after that turn the heat down let the cook fish <laughs> let the fish cook slowly <laughs> Never trust a chef who doesn't eat while he's cooking. Okay, that's a lie, but I eat while I cook. I couldn't be a chef. I'd eat everything. Whoa. Garlic pita bread. Yeah. My goodness. 
fresh lemon straight off the tree. Wow. Wild food does not get better than this. Fresh fish straight out of the ocean. Hey? Ocean? Yeah, nice. <laughs> one, one more time. <laughs> Wild food does not get better than this. Fresh fish straight out of the river. <laughs> After we enjoy a feed of the freshest fish money can buy, we set up camp for the night. We use a Felden Shelter rooftop tent. It's always right there on every adventure and hands down the best tent I've ever owned. It's day two on the Mohawker. We wake up to rain pattering on the tent, which isn't ideal, but I'm excited anyway. Harness is on his way to join us for the day, and I'm really excited to go fishing with him again. On the fly? I've got it on video, right? On the fly? Oh, yeah, Yes, sure. <laughs> Yesterday we saw, saw that trout sitting in a shallow pool, like this deep. Fly? No. I tried, I tried, should, I tried, I tried, I tried with the fly. You tried? But, but there was too many rocks around, so it kept getting snagged in the, in the rocks. Okay. I couldn't. Yeah, but the Rapala, boom, straight away. Yeah. Dude, like, one one cast. Duck, on. That's cheating, you know? Hey, man. Spinning. It's <laughs> cheating. We, need, <laughs> we, needed, we needed something to eat. <laughs> we needed something to eat for the show. Oh, yeah, true. The art of catching a fly. No. Not, not catching a fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you're worse than me. That's great. <laughs> Some people you just can't help but like, and I really like this guy a whole lot. Ready for day two. Raining a little bit, but uh, fingers crossed, I'm gonna clear up. The weather doesn't really improve much at all, but we fish anyway. And a good thing that we do, because this morning is one that I won't forget for quite some time. I've never tried caught on a fly. Man, that felt so good. Congrats! 
Oh. Oh my god, I just did a suck. I was like, wow, that felt so good. It's like, is it a rock? Is it a rock? No, it's a fish. Rainbow. A rainbow trap. Release or eat? Release, huh? And away she goes. Um, man, it, uh, just yeah, it was only a little fish, but uh, catching my first trout on a on a fly like that—it's just the, that's something I've been meaning to do for a long time, and that felt really good. Hey, Hannes, yep. um, how long did you say it took you to catch your first fish on a fly? Hi. Two two years—is that what you said? Yeah, it took me roughly two years. <laughs> Oh, the cool. art of that's catching fun. a trout is fly fishing. Okay? Spinning is cheating. <laughs> man. Welcome in the club. That was good, man. <laughs> that felt really good. <laughs> Beginner's luck. <laughs> this guy. I'm using a, a check nymphing setup. So you got this uh, the colored tippet as an indicator. And this, just using a couple of uh, weighted nymphs. Super, that was like maybe like two meters away from where I was standing, just just drifting these little nymphs right past the rocks, and I didn't actually see, but I think it took the um, I think it took the little purple one. Let's see. <laughs> you know, like some things you just really want to do for a long time, and then you get to do it, and it's just purple. It's all about my rod. Yeah, he caught it on my rod. So. <laughs> People still want to eat meat, but like the, the thing is, like today, everyone wants all the uncomfortable bits to be hidden. You know? We hide everything we don't want to see. We hide getting old. We hide dying. We hide birth. And like all these animals are getting slaughtered in facilities that no one gets to see, and it's fucking horrible the way animals live and die. But because people don't see it, they go, "Oh, that's okay. You know, oh, I don't have to see it. I don't have to witness it. I don't have to be a part of that, and that's okay." I just buy it in the supermarket in a plastic tray. Yeah. But that's, I think that's exactly why, why I want to do this is because it's really important for people to like remember that, hey, the fish that you eat comes from somewhere. Um, so you have to actually engage with nature. And that's, like when I talk about like wild food and that kind of stuff, it's the engagement with nature. I love this place so much. Uh, the Mohaka uh, roughly translates to a place to dance uh, or a place to perform the haka. There's something really special about this place. And I think whatever it is that you do, whether it's just trout fishing or hiking or camping or hunting, just so like get outside and witness this. Priceless, priceless.